Hi, Cancer. Welcome to your November 2017 Astro Update. It's Rena here. So Cancer, this is a year, not just a month, where love can come to you in a very easy and plentiful way. And this is because starting in October, Jupiter has been in your fifth house in the sign of Scorpio. And the fifth house is the house of falling in love. It is also the house of creativity, including creating human beings known as um, children. And so it's the house of conceiving, the house of children in general. But if your children are artistic projects, then you may be very prolific in the next 12 months. And like I said, you may have a lot of options when it comes to dating, if that is your thing. So I think that in November, it's very good for love because Jupiter is there. We have Venus going into this sector on November 7th. And Venus, I mean, that's the goddess of love. Hello. And um, Mercury will be in this sector for the first week of the month. So you can kind of see how it all gets set up. Mercury is communication. In the fifth house, you may be talking to somebody that you take a fancy to. And then Venus comes in with the um, arrows of love and... There's a new moon in this sector on the 18th in Scorpio. So at that new moon, new beginnings, we have Jupiter, Venus, and there was something else I thought too. Well, the sun too. The sun in itself is a great influence. Um, if you think about the, the tarot, look at what the sun card represents. It represents the fifth house. It rules the fifth house. Hello. What am I talking about? It rules the fifth house. So the sun belongs in the fifth house. And uh, so you have all of that going on at the same time. I think that's very auspicious uh, for artists and lovers. So what else is happening? I could just call it a day right then, can I? Couldn't I? Um, on the fourth of the month, we're going to have a full moon in Taurus. And uh, for you, this is your 11th house of hopes and wishes. So this is wonderful too, because this is considered the luckiest house. And Cancerians may find that a dream that they have been long um, holding out for may come to fruition. And um, if you were actually actively working for a goal, you may finish it at this time. Because full moons can also be endings, there may be some group that you have been associated with that you decide to kind of cut ties with. Now, I'm going to talk about Neptune in a second, but it could be even connected to a spiritual organization. But it could be a friendship as well. Now, the full moon can bring light to something, you know, shed light on a particular thing going on for you. So there's also the possibility that you learn about a friend of yours, you find out something. And um, that could be an awareness that that you know, you didn't realize, it could lead you to then call it quits, or maybe you have to contact them. If you haven't been talking in a while. But what I was saying about Neptune, I guess I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. But Neptune has been retrograde since June. And on the 22nd, it's going direct in your ninth house, which deals with the higher mind and higher education. Well, higher education is obviously the higher mind too. But I was thinking of philosophy and religious organizations and things like that and also foreign travel. So with that full moon uh, and Neptune retrograde up until the 22nd, one of the 
aspects of Neptune when it's retrograding is kind of a reality check. And in the ninth house, it could be that you were belonging to some kind of a group that could be even described as a cult. When Neptune is transiting a particular house, it can really increase your spiritual participation in some organization. But the flip side can be that because Neptune can deal with um, illusion, there may be somebody who puts you under their spell, so to speak. And um, it could be some kind of a strange group that professes to be about something spiritual and yet is anything but. So it's very important to be aware of these kinds of things. Now, when Neptune goes back direct, you are going to be much more, how shall I say it, back in your dreamy state, which is good in a way because you may have had like a crisis of faith. You may have had some kind of as existential crisis during the last four months. And by the way, this could be just in general, it doesn't have to belong to a particular organization. So now you may have gotten your faith back and everything is back on track. Um, as I said, that's on the 22nd. So getting back to the earlier part of the month, Mars is going to be in your fourth house of home and family all month. So watch out for any kind of conflict with your family of origin or even your current family. If there is some kind of disagreement that is long uh, running and um, people cannot seem to get on board together for, about something. But this could have nothing to do with uh, family matters. This may have to do with your home itself. Maybe you're renovating and this could be on all month for you with the renovations. And, um, uh, Venus. Yeah. You know, I think that that could actually be more likely the scenario because Venus is there for the first week and Venus can be redecorating. So it may be that you're just doing like a major overhaul on your home. Unless Venus indicates you bought a home and that's the money factor and then you're moving home. That's possible as well. So then um, the sun goes into Sagittarius on the 21st of the month. That's your sixth house of health. That's good for healing. Mercury has been there since the seventh in that house of health. You've had Saturn there for two and a half years. So cancers may have experienced some kind of a situation that forced you guys to really up your health game. Maybe some kind of a health challenge since 2015. And now you probably have gotten into quite a routine. This may involve exercise or possibly diet. Mercury actually rules the sixth house. So when it enters there on the seventh, you may be looking at diet again, <laughs> as you did uh, last year as well. And um, actually, just giving you a preview of next month, there is going to be a retrograde in um, a Mercury retrograde at the beginning of December. Now, I, I would have to check my ephemeris. It might be in the sign of Capricorn. But even if that's the case, it probably will dip back into Sagittarius. So it'll probably go back into that sixth house 
And so you may be tweaking your diet and and rethinking, maybe doing research about what's best for you. But overall, I think this is really wonderful if you are someone who has been wondering when you were going to get your uh, life partner. <laughs> and uh, obviously, the fifth house is that initial stage of falling in love. So it's not so much that you are necessarily going to settle down, but you have multiple opportunities, God willing. So anyway, Cancer, if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below, but otherwise have a great month. Bye.